Welcome back to MasterChef 1993 as we journey north in our tireless nationwide search for the best amateur cook in Britain. Now this is the region which has produced two previous winners in 1990 and 92, so we're anticipating, nay, expecting great cooking this evening. As they compete for that place in the semi-finals and the title of MasterChef of the north of England, our contestants will have just two and a half hours in which to prepare a championship quality three-course meal for four people. Their budget limit, as ever, is 30 pounds. Later on in the program, I'll be giving details of the viewers' competition, but now let's meet our contestants. In the red kitchen, Tim Stokes, the quantity surveyor from Harrogate in North Yorkshire. Tim's a regular at the local gym where he mightily strives to achieve the body beautiful. Otherwise, his hobbies are more befitting to a country gentleman. Shooting is often followed by the tranquility of fly fishing in the River Wharf. They're rarely in the same day, I guess. In the yellow kitchen, Rachel Southall from Sheffield. Rachel's a staff nurse at the Jessup Hospital where she cares for premature babies in the neonatal ward. She's an enthusiastic swimmer and a regular visitor to the Olympic pool at the Ponds Forge Centre. A devout Christian, Rachel spends much of her spare time at Christchurch Fullwood where she's a leading member of the music group. Finally, in the blue kitchen, Juliet Forden from Malton, also in North Yorkshire. Juliet's a practicing masseuse, specializing in curing the injuries and ailments which befall racing cyclists, as well as coming to the aid of her own team on race days. Go now, go! Juliet's also continuing her education, currently studying for physics A levels at York College. Welcome to all of you. Now let's find out about this evening's menus. Tim, tell us about your menu. Today I'm cooking scallops with ginger and soy butter sauce, noisette of lamb with red currant and garlic sauce, pan-fried raisin potatoes and cream leeks. I'm finishing with a hot passion fruit souffle. Terribly daring to make a souffle and the debut of passion fruit this year. Rachel, what's your menu? Um, I'll start with medley of mushrooms in phyllo pastry parcels in a butter sauce, followed by scallops of halibut surrounded by courgette um, in a white wine sauce with vegetables, followed by pears uh, poached in sauternes with a chocolate and ginger sauce. Excellent. So I think we all look forward to seeing what mushrooms turn up in the medley. And finally, Juliet. Well, I'm doing cauliflower and white stilton soup served with toast rounds and a celebration roast on croute with fantail lemon and garlic potatoes with julienne of carrots with dill served with a, a vegetarian gravy and to follow uh, apricot streusel with amaretto and apricot sauce with Greek yogurt cream. Wow and that's our first vegetarian menu of the year and it sounds awfully exciting. So it's time to get things underway. I'm going to send you off to your kitchens. I wish you all the best of luck. Let's get cooking. Ruthie Rogers, who was one of last year's judges, Rose Gray moved the goalposts of Italian cooking in Great Britain. Her restaurant at the River Cafe remains a notable oasis of wine, olive oil, and the best Italian home cooking. Welcome, Rose. Tell me, tell me a bit more about olive oil, because olive oil is the sort of rocket fuel of Italian cooking. Mm. Most of it couldn't exist without olive oil. Well, I have to say that um, olive oil, for me, is sort of like my desert island choice without a doubt you know I couldn't go anywhere without it I don't think anything tastes good I, I think olive oil is 
great, you know, on your bread in the morning, and, and it's fantastic, you know, just um, with a piece of cheese at the end of a meal. We went round Italy recently, and we went to um, mostly estates that make wine, and nearly all of the estates that make wine also make olive oil if they're in the region where olive trees grow and they all make olive oil and they taste so different i mean the oil from the ligurian coast which is sort of around genoa is usually is much lighter oil even though it's pressed in the same way i.e they just pick the olives they sort of mash them up into a paste and then they spread them on these mats and the oil drips through so there's nothing added nothing except for the actual oil and then in other places like for instance we've just been in tuscany and we went to um um, a couple of estates which are just sort of east of Florence and they have got olives which are very sort of s very strong in flavour and they pick them green and they might throw a few leaves in when they're crushing mm. and this oil is sort of you know is, is unbelievable it's so strong it's got this sort of pepper that practically blows the roof of your mouth off but of course it's absolutely exquisite if you pour an oil that tastes like that onto a, a piece of bread, you know, that's just soft and hasn't really got any flavour itself. I mean, you can imagine, you know, something as powerful as that. It's just a sort of wonderfully exciting taste. But uh, some people, the one, one of the sad facts about olive oil, especially good, delicious olive oil, is that it appears to be terribly expensive. Fifteen pounds a litre is about the price. Of course, you can buy pretty good olive oil from all the big supermarkets. They nearly all do their own now. And, you know, they call it extra virgin olive oil, which means it is a cold-pressed olive oil. Because it's changing the market and many, many more people want it, I think actually the price of olive oil is levelling out. Um, it's certainly this year no more expensive than last year, which is rather a good indication. It's extraordinarily good news for those of us who virtually live on the stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> using so much of it. Now, I think it's going to be time. I don't know what sort of olive oil, if any, we're going to find in the kitchens. Right. But shall we set off and have yep, a little let's. tour and see, okay, and see what they're up to? Yep. So let's go and visit Tim in the Red Kitchen. Right, now, it appears that Tim is eviscerating, or whatever you do to a passion fruit, I guess you do, it doesn't have viscera. What are you, what are you doing to this passion fruit? It's just at the moment, it. scooping them out, taking care to get the red nodules out, because they make the sauce look a lovely deep orange colour. Do they colour. affect the taste, those red nodules? I don't think they affect the taste, but <laughs> it actually brightens the sauce up. And this is going in, this is the, uh, the, I suppose, the beginning of this hot passion fruit souffle. Well, the, a little of the sauce will go into the actual passion fruit mixture. Mm. From here, I'm just going to quickly whisk it up and loosen the pulp. Now, I want to know, now, every, everyone who appears on the programme is allowed to bring in five, five things from home. Right. And, Tim, can we see this, uh, this thing? Can, can we actually get this, a shot of this? Because this appears to have been nicked from a rather grand hotel somewhere. <laughs> I've never, I haven't seen one of these outside of a stately home or a five-star hotel. Is this yours, this hot Yes, I inherited thing? it from my grandfather, whether he lifted it or not. I'm not I, sure. I doubt it very much. <laughs> it's great, actually. And this well, is your plate warmer. Yeah, well, I, I brought that because, obviously, with the souffle cooking at the last minute and to serve on the hot plates, I'll have a problem without... We shall leave you Thank and you. come back and anxiously look at the uh, progress. They do smell absolutely delicious, actually. Yeah, they smell wonderful. We'll be back. Thank you. Thanks. Now, let's see what Rachel's up to. This is a fantastic mise en place, actually. That is <laughs> really <laughs> extraordinary, yeah. isn't it? Well done. Yeah. Look at Excellent. that. So what are those for? I like to be organised. <laughs> yeah, I like to be organised. Look at this. Yeah. What are these going into? The carrots are going in lemon, um, oh, and yes. the beans just in butter. Um, the leeks are going to be tied round the phyllo parcels, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Right. That's Good. very ambitious of me. Mm. Now, what, what mushrooms have you managed to put in your medley of mushrooms? Or is that just poetic licence? It's medley of mushrooms. Um, it's oyster mushrooms, brown cat mushrooms, and normal everyday mushrooms. I guess three makes a medley, don't you think yes. we can accept yes, that? Yes, three. Two wouldn't, three do. No. <laughs> now, this is for your pears in sauterne, yeah? Mm -hmm. And is that literally just sauterne that you're boiling them in? Or uh, not? No, it's sauternes, water and sugar. Right. right. And you don't put a lid on it? No. You don't? That's very interesting, because I would have thought that uh, to keep the 
the uh, sauterne sort of not disappearing, <laughs> but to, you know, impregnate its flavour yeah. into the pearls that you might have put a lid on it. You know. No, but this is much better because Rachel gets to sniff the yes, fumes. Yes, she's there. Well, I'm all enjoying right. this. Man. I'm, it's fabulous. I'm enjoying yeah. this tremendously, yeah. actually. Mm. And and what's what's bubbling away in here? Just some stock. That That's I've just, just made. some stock. Excellent. We shall return. Thank you. And we, we shall come back for a whiff of set home. Right now, now we're going to see something that neither of us has ever eaten. I think, because this is your celebration. Oh. <laughs> celebration, yes. And this is a vegetarian yes, menu. What true. is it? Um, it's a bit like, um, it's a vegetarian's beef wellington, you would have. Right. And uh, it's got onions in there, have you? Yes. Oh, it smells This has got good. onions, Brazil nuts, uh, breadcrumbs, thyme, marjoram, salt and pepper, a little lemon juice, uh, egg, and a little water. And I'm just doing the base, and I do a stuffing down the middle. And then it's wrapped up in pastry. In pastry, and I do a plated over the top. And then you bake it. Then I bake it and just serve it in the slice. Do, 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 do you make your pastry? Yes. Oh, yes. It's it looks very nice pastry. Can I looking. touch it? Yes. I made it in the food processor. Oh, right. <laughs> why, did, why did you want to touch it? I just wanted to see how warm it was, as a matter of fact, because that's a difficult thing, making something like yes. this. Yes, particularly with all the light. granite board to keep it cool. Yes, very good. Yeah. If you notice that, that's presumably the thing you brought specially, yes. is it? Yeah. Yes, that's your <laughs> special thing. Because I, I made an apricot streusel, and that's got a patty suka base, yeah. and that also needs a cool Exactly, base yes. As well. Excellent. Well, before your pastry gets too warm, we'll <laughs> let you manhandle it into shape. Okay. Or woman handle it into shape. And we'll come back and see you. Okay, thank okay, you. Okay, thanks. Okay, I think we can now emerge from the kitchens, or I guess we're going to be surrounded by the kitchens, and talk about some of the menus. So why don't we look at Tim's first? Yeah, and he's great. made scallops with ginger and soy butter sauce. Well, Noisette of lamb with garlic and red currant sauce and pan-fried rosemary potatoes, which, without even seeing, I'm immensely looking forward to. I am too. Being very greedy about yes. those. And a hot passion fruit souffle. Do you like the balance of that menu? Yes, I think that, no, I think that menu's got a good balance. I mean, it's, uh, it's always nice to start with a fish, and fish sounds as if it's going to come out, you know, simple and interesting sauce. And the lamb with the potatoes, that's, I think that's exquisite. And as for the... Souffle, I'm really looking forward to that. I think I, it's going I to be an excellent finish to that menu. I I, think, I, on the whole, I think it's very, very well thought out. Yeah, I, I like the, the shape of that. Now, Rachel is doing medley of mushrooms and phyllo pastry with butter sauce, then halibut escalops with courgette, and finally the pears and the amazingly powerful <laughs> sauterne, which we're still being delighted by, with ginger and chocolate sauce, mm. which, you know, once again, is a great sounding pudding yeah, to me. Yeah, very exciting. Well, I, I'm, I think this one is extremely well thought out too. I mean, there's a nice balance of things that I would want to eat on that on that menu. I don't know how she's cooking that halibut, do you? No, but we'll find we'll out find shortly. We'll later, yeah. <laughs> we'll all be no, I, 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 I think that, you know, her choice is, is, is exactly on line, you know, to a good balanced meal. Finally, Juliet, cauliflower with the vegetarian menu, mm. cauliflower and white stilton soup. Celebration roast on crute, which we've seen, with fantail, lemon, garlic, potatoes, and various vegetables. And then apricot streusel with amaretto and apricot sauce. The wonderful on crute roast will, I mean, that, that's excellent, and the potatoes and, and um, sound very good. I can't imagine how it's going to work, but we're going to have to see. And um, apricot streusel, well, that is more pastry, isn't it? And it might, you just might feel very, very full, I think, at the end of this meal. But you might feel very, very happy. Yes, I suppose. Beautifully it, composed. It all yeah. depends how sort of delicate, yeah. delicately yeah. it's put together. Out of the three menus, would you dare to say at this stage which one you um, are most excited by? I think I'm most excited probably by um, Tim's. Right. We shall see. Right. Now, it's Rachel's Filo Pastries which have inspired the question in this week's competition for you at home. Now, to enter, all you have to do is dial this number and tell me in which country did Filo Pastry originate. Was it A, the Philippines, or should I say the Philippines, B, Malta, <laughs> or C, Greece? Now, the number to ring is 0891 and when you call, I'll repeat the question. 
We've literally thousands of lines. They're all open until midnight tomorrow, so you don't have to miss any of the program in order to compete. The first correct answer out of our huge hat wins an evening for two at the restaurant of one of MasterChef's guest chefs, complete with an overnight stay. It will be absolutely wonderful and an extremely special evening. So get calling and the best of luck. Now, what is a coolie was last week's question, much to the annoyance of Anthony Worrell Thompson. The answer is a fruit puree. Tell me about your um, sauce for your scallops. The scallops are done, they're poached in an oily pra and water sauce just for a couple of minutes. And I take the scallops out and leave those on a warm plate yes. and then reduce an oily pra with cream, ginger, what, and so you a put soy. The fresh ginger? No, <clears throat> some ginger that I've just blanched, quick, quickly blanched with yes. sugar to take the harshness away. Right. And then I just add soy. Why do you want to take the harshness away? Well, it's just I think the de delicacy of the scallop is just best to be left, personally. Mm. Now, these are fanned tail. Lemon. Lemon garlic yeah, potatoes. potatoes. And yes. what is that to a lay person? Well, the, they've been marinated in lemon juice, oil and garlic. And uh, I've actually turned them Raw, peel. or are they cooked already? The raw, the potatoes. The raw potatoes. Yes. And I peeled and turned them to this shape, and then I've done the slices down. So when they're You've cooking, made little incisions, yes. which are going to open up. Whilst they're cooking, they'll open up like a right. fan Excellent. I really look forward to that. You don't put them. pepper on there? No. 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 Doesn't need pepper. Doesn't need yeah. pepper. No. I just have to baste them halfway. Yeah. See, that's, I like that sort of conviction, cooking. It doesn't need pepper, yeah, <laughs> and it's not going to get it yeah, that's quite very right. Convinced. I'm uh, unbelievably impressed by the delicacy of these little filet parcels. Awfully good. Do you find it a very fiddly thing to put together there, or is it relatively easy? Um, practice makes perfect. I see. I see. And how many times have you done this recipe before? This particular one, only a couple, actually. Oh, that's, that's very exciting, then. One thing that has fascinated me throughout your cooking is your musical performance. Because I noticed there's a lot of sort of humming and singing and foot tapping and all that sort of thing. Is that, are there any particular numbers that you favor whilst you're cooking or do you just break into anything? Anything. Anything. And do you think it, how does it, does it help? Uh, no. it doesn't matter, um, anything. Well, I've been, I think it's been immensely entertaining. In fact, we've been taping it and a record will soon be available. <laughs> Right, there's a tremendous head of steam up in the kitchens now, and it's time to introduce my second guest. I believe he's simply one of the funniest men in Britain, Mr. Alan Corr. And Alan, that's an introduction that's impossible to follow, yeah, because you yeah. can't say anything funny enough now. Well, no, I can, I can just be extremely dull, and <laughs> everyone will know we got me on a bad night. <laughs> The last time we um, ate together, we were indulging in a herring orgy at the Danish club. <laughs> yes, I went for the wrong reasons. When you said come to the Danish club, I imagine we would do much more than just <laughs> stuff down 88 different sorts of herring. We did have a, a ravishing waitress, but as she was carrying herring all the time. Uh, <laughs> really we got around to do very little else. I thought it was quite good, if you want that much herring. It was the point at which you realise the differences between herring aren't quite as large as the Danes believe. No. And you know that life in Denmark can get a little bit dull by the 18th course. <laughs> but what are your current food crazes now? I didn't have anti-crazes. Mm. Uh, I think we've talked before about this. There are fashions in food that, uh, that irritate me. For example, it's impossible to go to France now and avoid marinated salmon. This has been true for about two years. It seems to me that a lot of French rural restaurants, or restaurants in small towns, do what English country restaurants used to do and were crazy to do it, which is ape the fashion of the urban centre. No. Instead of simply giving you the, their own coarse local rabbit pate and giving you a good steak of and a good course. salad, That's they're not doing it. You're going in and getting a lot of um, But that, that tends cuisine. to happen. I mean, sadly, it's happening in Italy now. A bit too. But a lot of it must be the fault of the media food culture. It's programmes like this, in a way, which encourage inventiveness. I mean, if you had a programme called, I don't know, Master Fry Up, people had to come <laughs> in and do sausage, <laughs> chips and beans absolutely perfectly, and you finally got down to you know, the regional Mm, Programs like idea. this do encourage people to be inventive. That's the very good side. The bad side 
is that because it's a very popular programme, God knows why, but it's a very popular programme, restaurateurs out there are saying, well, this is clearly what millions of people want. We're going to try and do it. And we're going to turn Sally Love's Caff or the Old Copper Kettle into uh, a good food guide entrant. And it's not easy to get it right. But the problem, of course, is that it is competitive. This is a competitive programme, but almost all cooking is competitive. Uh, we will say, oh, I will say to my wife, God, we ate at the Grossman's last night and didn't Lloyd make a wonderful souffle <laughs> when they come <laughs> over here? We really got, you know what yes, I mean. Yes. But it does happen. People who go to one another's houses for dinner, constantly trying, with the best will in the world, oh, yes, not offensively, too. to say, well, let's give them something that's going to knock their socks off. I, I do have that sense in the restaurant every night. I think, you know, I really want to, you know, blow their minds. I, yeah. I want people to eat something. But I still go back to what I said before, is that... I want them to think that that fish tasted so delicious with that combination of that olive oil and those herbs, you know, which is, which is not I'm, really I must, I must stop you. Story. I must stop you before we get too hungry because we've reached a critical juncture in the competition. I think that means the same as a crucial moment. There are only 10 minutes of cooking time left. Mm. Flashing lights tell us that our two and a half hours have passed, so doff those aprons, the cooking time is over. In the Red Kitchen, Tim Stokes started with scallops in a ginger soy and butter sauce. He went on to nuance out of lamb with garlic and red currant sauce with rosemary potatoes, leeks and caramelized shallots. His pudding was a hot passion fruit souffle. Rachel Southall in the Yellow Kitchen cooked a medley of mushrooms and filo pastry with butter sauce, followed by halibut and courgette with seasonal vegetables. She rounded things off with pears and sauternes with a ginger and chocolate sauce. In the Blue Kitchen, Juliet Forden cooked a vegetarian meal, starting with cauliflower and white stilton soup. Her main course was a celebration roast en croute with lemon garlic potatoes and julienne of carrots with dill. Her dessert was an apricot streusel with amaretto and apricot sauce and yogurt cream. It's our treat because it's time for eating. So let's go and start as usual with the products of the red kitchen. Um, this looks particularly wonderful, the scallops with ginger and soy butter. Look, What's this little heap of fried? Celeriac. It's fried this celeriac. This is celeriac. It looks terrific. Do we actually. go straight in? I love celeriac. I would go straight in if I were you, but I'm going to have celeriac. It's an interesting sauce. It's quite, um, it's quite oriental, actually, isn't it? The soy is strong. Mm. I, I like that. Slightly disappointed that the ginger has sort of gone into the background. It seems to me something complimentary to the scallop, because the scallop, wonderfully, is quite strong. It's holding up. You mm. feel this flavour, mm. yeah. texture. It's a wonderfully uh, muscular thing, a scallop, anyhow. So it, it doesn't get lost in the sauce. And the Schwarzenegger of crustacea. Yeah. It has vegetables. This is a scallop with vegetables. Mm. I think it's delicious. Mm. They're Flavor terribly is there. well cooked scallops. Why are you well? leaving yeah. it? Well, Why because there's up? so much else to eat. Rubbish. Yeah, but you go on. No, no, I had two very, pieces very good of scallop. Indeed. I thought it was delicious. And is a scallop actually a crustacean? No, it's not. Isn't it? Yes, it is. I thought know. it was a mollusk. Oh, of course it I've is. I've only ever eaten it. them. I don't speak to them or <laughs> swim with them. I don't know <laughs> what it is. It that's not what plate. I've heard. Let's put the noirs out of lamb. I do think that sauce is really beautiful, Excuse actually. Me. Mm -hmm. Perfect sauce. With um, garlic and red currant sauce and pan-fried rosemary potatoes. The lamb is beautifully cooked, isn't oh, gosh, it? It's wonderful sauce. colour. Well, the sauce tastes as good as it looks. Mm, delicious. <laughs> Leeks is very, very good. Leeks. Uh, not yet. Sensational. Mind the suit, Lloyd. I know you're enthusiastic, <laughs> but... <laughs> I'm going to taste the leek. It's quite fun eating off one plate, isn't mm. it? Oh, the leeks are good, actually. Very nice. Yeah. Very genuine. Very yeah. sort of simply cooked. Yeah. I could happily eat that. If you like a lot, you've got it, haven't yeah, you? Well, I, 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 I think more garlic, bringing it all out and sort of yeah. unifying it. Now, 
This is the hot passion fruit soup. It's fabulous colour, that is. Fabulous colour. It's a wonderful look. It looks a really perfect is. consistency for the soup. It layer. really is pretty serious looking. Nice mm. crunchy top. Wonderful strong taste of the passion fruit. That's yeah. marvellous. Wonderful, isn't it? It's marvellous. Mm. Very good no, it's Very, very It's delicious. very well cooked souffle. I love it. I love the sort of squidgy bits of souffle, mm. don't you? So you were the one on those tapes, the squidgy gate tapes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you weren't going to mention it. Um, I said I wouldn't, you know. So we really want me to sacrifice myself. I'll, I'll see if the, the strawberry, strawberry goes right. with it. No, no, absolutely not. <laughs> Come, on. Else. Come on. The caravan moves on. Mmm, mm, that is good. Wow. Well, well, this is rather spectacular this, looking too, isn't I, it? I think this looks exceptionally spectacular. Oh, yeah. yes. Okay, so I'm going to plunge right in. Plunge right in. Very nice. Colour. Is this a leak? Uh, I guess it's a little leak collar that's tied around. Yeah. Mm. yeah? Yeah. Good. Mushrooms. Yep. Very nice yep. taste of ah. the mushrooms. I can taste the oyster mushrooms. Mm. Really good. Very good. Bacon. It was very readily available mushrooms. Mm. The, 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 the butter sauce is, is excellent. Mm. Beautifully mm. made. Yeah. It's a very good salsa. Mm. Excellent. Okay. Right. Now, on to the fish dish that would be a conundrum for a man from the planet. Looks like Off a tile, get. actually. actually. Yes, it does. It's like a, a ceramic, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Mm. Art right. Nouveau. And I like the idea of halibut and courgette. I think the colour belly is a sensational. Well, I love the texture of halibut because mm. it's got this wonderful steaky flakiness. Mm. Yes, it's delicious oh, halibut. Very good. Very, very good indeed. Mm. The sauce is some... Um, mm. ...complements it very well. That is delicious. Halibut. Very good. Absolutely yeah. lovely. And simple as, as anything. Mm. And very, very good indeed. Did you mm. taste the courgette? Cool taste. Yes, I did. It's a cool taste. The courgette are really good, actually. Well, then I'll, I'll give it another try. I'll just force I think you must another. force yourself. Yeah, yeah. Really, I think that really works pretty fabulously mm. well. A very, very nice taste combination. Mm. Mm. And this is the glossiest, richest, yes. darkest chocolate sauce in We're the We're going to get a filthy eating yeah. that. <coughs> I think you've got to cut mm. the pear, don't you? Probably right, you <laughs> will stand back. <laughs> you stand back in case I shoot it. Oh. Ah. And it's a pretty easily carvable pear, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. I need to scoop, don't you think? And this is scoop. ginger and chocolate sauce. The texture of the pear is perfect. It's because it's um. Mm. It's it's been marinated in the sotan. Sotan's got it's nothing to do with the chocolate and uh, no, the ginger sauce. Ginger's been it's sort of been poached, poached in. in the oh, I see. I see. I see. Mm. That ginger and chocolate sauce is, is very serious. That's quite a. Um, yeah, it's a major sauce. Yeah. Quite a complicated combination, isn't it? Mm. That is good. It's a lovely. It's a lovely. Pudding. Okay, onward. I must say, it all looks <laughs> <You'll need that. laughs> Yeah. Right, now, this, this is our looks, vegetarian. This looks, everything looks terrific. Yeah, it's it is very, very pretty. This yeah. I, the three of us on one bowl of soup. Yes. <laughs> Cuts are beginning to bite. This right. is the cauliflower and white stilton. Mm. Let's see. Very very, very good indeed. Lovely taste of cauliflower, which is exceedingly difficult for vegetable to cook. It is very good. Isn't it? It's got a lovely, a sort of subtle, that is clever really good. taste. And as you say, Rose, it actually makes cauliflower taste like something, which is rather... It's very, it's very, very difficult to difficult. do. And I mean, combining mm. it also with Stilton mm. is, a, is, a, is a very that clever little taste yeah. in mm. the head, I think. Oh dear, this is all going to be terribly difficult to, to judge. So this is the celebration race on Crete. And it's made with um, lots of... Um, Herbs and it's got Brazil nuts in it. Yes, it's nuts and herbs and all that sort of thing. Well, let's get some pastry because. Mm. Very good Brazil nuts. Mm. It's yeah, got but I've never eaten um, anything made from nuts as a, as a main course. Oh, the pastry is delicious. The pastry is wonderful. Excellent. Um, I mean, really everything excellent. is very well cooked mm. here. And I Absolutely. want to taste one of these potatoes that we Stuffing saw earlier. Stuffing is wonderful. The stuffing yeah. is fabulous. Mm -hmm. Did you taste one of these special potatoes yep. that are marinated? They're marinated. They've got a very sort How of do you marinate intense... A potato? Well, you let it sit you learn it? oil and Watch lemon the and garlic and all sorts of things. Mm. Can you taste a lemon? Apart. Yes, I can. Mm. Yeah, it's got quite a nice sort of 
show off mm. lemony taste, which goes well with this um, nutty stuffing. stuffing. That's very good. Yeah. Now. This is yogurt and um, strained yogurt and double cream. Me, See, and it sounded the apricot streusel with amaretto and apricot. All this mm. sounded very complicated, but it looks so yeah, it's beautiful. Very, very and simple. Okay. Amazingly edible. Mm. Go for apricot, it. Mm. amaretto, all good combination. Mm. Oh, and it's pretty as anything when you cut it open as well, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's wonderful. Mm. Very good, good. indeed. Mm. Excellent. Oh, that is extraordinary. Heaven. Amaretto. Wonderful mm. underneath that. I adore tart. amaretto. That's it's as good as any pudding I've had for mm. quite a while. Wonderful. Mm. Right. Anyway, I think that, I think okay. Marvelous. Shall we go and be judges? Yes. Follow yes. me to the top secret. It'll be very difficult. The top though. secret judging area, and don't trip over the edge of the stage. Well, this was a surprise. The soup and, and the passion fruit. Yes, the passion. But it was it was really the substitution of passion fruit for other fruit that one had had in those sort of circumstances. Yeah. So mm. it was was inventive. Yes, and it's high quality. I thought it was exquisitely good. Mm. Absolutely exquisite taste. I mean, it's sort of pudding I keep in my mind and think, you know, that was it served in a restaurant again back then. Invention and surprise. Exactly. The way in which the halibut was served mm. was a surprise. It looked wonderful on the plate. Yeah. I mean, it was really quite startling. Then when you ate it, realised it wasn't simply for the effect of the look. Oh, no. I think, I mean, taste was very, very good beautiful. indeed. It really yeah. did taste good, really actually. Mm. Fresh. Mm. Well, keep the mushrooms with that, the velo mm. pastry. But... Uh, the butter sauce complemented the mm. mushroom. It was a, and it was a very nice pretty, sauce, actually. It was a very pretty plate. The, the fact of those potatoes, which were interesting, they had a really good mm. taste, mm. Um, you know, shows that she, you know, she obviously thinks clearly about yeah. all these different ingredients yeah. and had thought of something skill. Very enormous skill in cooking that. Um, no doubt. So it's quite difficult, isn't it? No. <laughs> We've deliberated, cogitated, and digested at great length and come to our conclusions. But first, I'm going to ask my guests for a word or two about the really exceptional food we've been tasting. Rose, what are your thoughts? Well, I, w I was very, very impressed with the standard of cooking. I mean, incredibly impressed. The skill, particularly in the puddings. You know, I was so surprised at, at the taste that I got out of out of, for instance, that wonderful souffle. I mean, it was excellent taste. I thought the fish, um, the halibut was, you know, so beautifully cooked and had everything that, you know, whichever way you cook a halibut, you know, you can always take away that taste and that halibut had it, everything, you know, perfect fresh fish taste. Alan, what do you think? I have to compare it with what I am fed um, in, a large number of restaurants, and the quality was supremely high. Uh, there was no element of amateurishness, which I thought there might be. No, not at all. Uh, there was enormous competence. We always talk about meals we've had, but usually it's one dish. We say, do you remember that time? Mm. That's tremendous. And that's what I remember about this one dish in particular. Well, the North has once again lived up to its extremely high reputation. The winner and master chef of the North of England is Rachel Southall. So our congratulations to Rachel. She'll join us again in the semi-finals. Now next week, my guest will be the editor of the Daily Telegraph, Max Hastings, and the lady whose cookery school has become a household name, Prue Leith. We'll be judging three contestants from the southeast of England. For now, a huge thank you to Rose Gray and Alan Corrin for talking so beautifully with their mouths full. Thanks to our contestants for cooking superlatively and amazing our taste buds. And see you all next week for MasterChef. Thank you.